The Dr. Richard Eels House was built in 1835 in the Federal Greek Revival style and was partially remodeled in the Italianate style during the middle of the 19th century. Because of this, it shows an attractive blending of 19th century domestic architectural styles. It is the oldest standing two-story brick house in Quincy and is now an architectural site that showcases period furnishings. This house, the only clearly documented stop on the Underground Railroad to have survived in Quincy, was the residence of Dr. Richard Eels, a noted abolitionist. Eels was born in Connecticut in 1800 and graduated with a medical degree from Yale. In 1833, he and his wife Jane moved to Quincy where he established a medical practice. The couple adopted two children in 1840 and added two rooms to the back of their 1835 home. Dr. Eels would soon become active in the Quincy and Central Illinois abolitionist movement and is credited with helping several hundred slaves flee from Missouri on their journey to Canada. Eels became president of the Illinois Anti-Slavery Party in 1843 and was a candidate for the Liberty Party for the presidential election of 1844 and for the gubernatorial election in 1846. Before the Civil War, several hundred slaves fled to freedom through Quincy on the Underground Railroad. Dr. Richard Eels is perhaps the most celebrated of the Quincy abolitionists who helped these desperate people, which allowed his to become a symbol of the slavery issue that was addressed by Lincoln and Douglas during their Quincy debate in 1858. On August 21, 1842, Eels was caught trying to help a slave named Charlie escape from Monticello, Missouri. The evening of the escape, a freed African-American Quincyan and Underground Railroad agent, Berryman Barnett, spotted a man swimming across the Mississippi River. He arrived at the Eels' house with the slave, Charlie, to report that the man was running for freedom and is being pursued by a search party. Racing the darkness, Eels and the fugitive set off for the Mission Institute of Dr. David Nelson, a safer hiding place. Outside Quincy and from a distance, a group of the pursuers, sent by Charlie's owner, Chauncey Durkee, saw Eels' buggy and stopped him before he could reach the mission. Eels steered the buggy to the edge of a cemetery, today's Madison Park on 24th and Main Streets, and instructed Charlie to jump out and stay hidden. Before morning, however, Charlie was captured and taken back to Monticello. The Missouri vigilantes chased Eels home. Confronted by the group at his door, Eels denied he had helped a fugitive slave, claiming that he had been home all evening. But one of the pursuers had found Charlie's still wet clothing in the doctor's buggy, evidence that Eels had helped the black man. Eels was arrested and charged with harboring and secreting a fugitive slave under the Illinois Criminal Code. The next morning, a justice of the peace bound Eels for trial. The matter was to be heard in the circuit court of Judge Stephen A. Douglas in Quincy. Judge Douglas heard the case in April of 1843 and found Eels guilty of harboring an escaped slave. Eels was fined $400, which testimony had indicated was approximately half the value of the slave Charlie, which he appealed. Within the same year, the Illinois Supreme Court turned down his appeal. His trial for harboring a slave was one of only two in Quincy to have reached the United States Supreme Court. Later, when Eels' estate appealed his case to the Supreme Court, the guilty verdict was upheld. The appeals process drained Eels financially and emotionally, and he died on the Ohio River traveling east to rest in 1846. Because of these court cases and Dr. Eels' prominence in the abolitionist movement, the Dr. Eels House is recognized by the U.S. Department of the Interior and National Park Service as one of the 42 most important Underground Railroad sites deserving national recognition and support. Friends of the Dr. Richard Eels House was founded in 1990 to save this historic reassurer from demolition and is now open for tours. This Historic Quincy Business District podcast was produced by WGEM. Special thanks to the Gardner Denver Museum of Architecture and Design, the Historical Society of Quincy and Adams County, and Quincy Preserves for providing information. For more information, you can visit www.downtownquincy.com or walk to the HQBD office at 128 North 5th Street. I'm WGEM's Rich Kane.